Hello and welcome. Well, there is no doubt that during the last 40 years that you would have heard of SIDS and kids. And I'm sure that you can recall seeing people wear a bright red nose or driving their car with a big oversized one on the front bonnet, all in support of bereavement for sudden infant death and to research and to promote safe sleep techniques. Now today, this extraordinary organisation has a new name, Red Nose, and we're here to take the time to understand more about their incredible work um, in the lead up to Red Nose Day on the 14th of August. To do so, we welcome our special guest, Paula Dillon. Now, Paula has been a midwife for 17 years and has experience in both the public and private maternity sectors. Now, she currently works with families both in the antenatal and postnatal periods for clinical assessment, support education, as well as facilitating uh, childbirth and early parenting education for expecting parents. Thank you for joining us today, Paula. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Now, Red Nose are famous for Red Nose Day, which originated all the way back in 1988 um, when they urged Australians to wear a red nose and to be silly uh, for a serious cause. Now, 32 years later, it's hard to believe it's that long, but 32 years later, uh, Red Nose Day is still a much loved and iconic national fundraising event. Um, and as we just mentioned before, we'll be celebrated this year on Friday, the 14th of August. Now, you are are very passionate about um, this in particular um, and and I guess helping break taboos around stillbirth and miscarriage um, also you know using evidence based information to guide best practice now this is all prompted originally by your own experience so just initially can you tell us a little bit about your personal experience yeah no worries Rachel um, I'm a mother to um, three living children. Our eldest daughter is 16. And then in 2005, um, we experienced the devastating stillbirth of our second daughter, Annabelle, um, completely unexpectedly, uh, six days past her due date. And I was already a midwife at the time and I'd heard about what was then SIDS and kids, but never in my wildest nightmares would I have thought I'd be reaching out to them personally. Um, so after Annabelle was stillborn, um, I received a phone call from a beautiful counsellor from, from SIDS and Kids and was put in touch with a support group, um, which I attended for a long time and then went on to do some peer support um, of my own, um, supporting other parents who have suffered um, the, the devastating loss or death of a, a baby or child. Um, and yeah, my volunteer work has continued there. Uh, I now do some volunteer work on the on the phone line um, and I've just always kept my finger in. I've always had an interest in education and I guess tying it in with my midwifery career <coughs> and my passion and interest in education and then personal experience of stillbirth. Um, now the Red Nose has just been a, an organisation that will always be very close to my heart. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Um, and midwives really play um, such an important role in um, educating new parents and families about how to care for their baby, including how to sleep their baby safely. Um, and so on a day-to-day -day basis in, in, in your work, you spread um, safe sleep um, messages, you know, helping keep families and the community overall aware of current guidelines and research about sudden and unexpected death in inf infancy. Um, in saying this, can you please explain um, what Red Nose, um, their six safe sleep recommendations are? Yeah, absolutely. So since, you know, uh, the early 80s and, and then moving on to the late 80s, um, and the research has informed these safe sleep practices. Um, and they are always sleep baby on their back, not on their tummy or their side. Keep baby's head and face uncovered. So avoiding using um, hats, for example, because they slip down and cover baby's um, face. Keep baby smoke free, not just after birth, but also before birth during pregnancy. Have a safe sleeping environment night and day. So that includes making sure the mattress is firm, that it's clean and flat, 
that it's in a safe cot that meets Australian industry safety standards and making sure that there's no blanket, soft bedding, toys, bumpers, dunas, pillows in the cot around baby. Um, sleeping baby in the same room as parents, for preferably for the first six to 12 months. And lastly, breastfeeding baby where possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing those. Um, and these, uh, or Red Nose's safe sleep recommendations come from more than 40 years of evidence-based research. Um, you know, and as a result, Red Nose has um, led the world in reducing incidence of SIDS by more than 85%, which is just an incredible, um, you know, uh, stat to be to be um, reporting on an incredible work um, and the, re the recommendations you've just shared are evidence-based um, with a view to sleep baby safely and reduce the risk um, as we were just saying of sudden unexpected death in infancy now in saying this we published red nose's article titled what is a safe sleep environment for your baby for someone who hasn't yet read the article can you please tell us what it's about and then what inspired red nose to write it so the article was inspired by some research um, and some research about infant care practices and parent uptake of safe sleep, safe sleep messages. Mm -hmm. um, and that was based in, in Queensland. Um, but it was prompted by Red Nose, or Red Nose was prompted to write this um, because there's still, the message is, is out there, but is it really being adhered to? Um, so, you know, they, they write these articles to provide evidence-based information to the community about those safe sleeping guidelines that I've just outlined. Mm -hmm. So I understand there's been some quite concerning new research into safe sleep recently published in Queensland, as you just mentioned. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, so the, the research article that I've just mentioned, that was a, a real eye-opener. Mm -hmm. um, it came from a survey of more than 3,300 new parents in Queensland, and it was published earlier this year in BMC Paediatrics. And you're right when you say that the, the findings um, were concerning. Uh, three of the main findings that they found were more than one in three new parents said they hadn't been putting their babies on their back to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, also, 38% of infants were sleeping with soft items, um, bulky bedding, or sleeping on a soft surface. And only 13% of families reported routinely practicing all six safe sleep messages that I've just explained as well. Um, and we know that these are all risk factors for sudden infant death. And we also know that no parent would willingly put their baby at risk. So um, it's really good to know this research because this sort of research can inform um, future messages and education messages for, for new parents in the community. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a link through to that article in the show notes, um, which also sort of clicks through to some um, other bits and pieces as well. There's some, some great hyperlinks in there. I've also read that more than 3,000 babies, toddlers and preschoolers die suddenly and unexpectedly in Australia each year. Um, and, you know, we're losing them to causes such as stillbirth, SIDS, miscarriage and neonatal death. Um, could you please tell us what, what is Red Nose doing to encourage new parents to ensure that their babies um, are sleeping safely? So Red Nose um, provides a whole range of evidence-based supports um, mm -hmm. to help new parents sleep their baby safely. Um, so we've talked about groundbreaking research um, into the causes and prevention of sudden and unexpected infant death. Um, but research then informs education for parents and that includes the Red Nose Safe Sleep Advice phone line. Mm -hmm. and that's a phone line that's available Monday to Friday from 9am till 5pm. There's also a safe sleep mobile app that you can download onto your phones free of charge. There's an online Red Nose advice hub and you can access that through the Red Nose website, which is rednose.org.au. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can have that link available. Absolutely. Well. In the show notes. Yep. And this hub has a range of resources that parents can easily access in relation to how old their baby is, or what topic they're interested in learning about. Mm -hmm. And Red Nose also has a hospital discharge pack, and that's got all the tools that new parents need to sleep 
baby safely at home. Um, and once again, the key to all of this education comes back to those six safe sleep recommendations. Yes. Now you're an executive volunteer and Queensland representative for Still Aware. They're an Australian not-for-profit charity solely dedicated to ending preventable uh, stillbirth through awareness and education in pregnancy. Um, and I've met with them before. I think they're doing incredible work also. Um, yeah. And you're also a volunteer um, parent supporter with SANS and Red Nose 24-7 phone line as well. Um, so I'd love to know from that perspective, what work is Red Nose currently doing with health healthcare professionals, um, including maternal and child health nurses, paramedics and first responders? So Red Nose has been involved in a number of um, research projects as well. Yes. yes. Um, they're also involved with the Stillbirth CRE, the Stillbirth Centre for Research Excellence. Um, and that Stillbirth CRE actually has um, not long ago released a safe baby bundle that you can access online. Um, and Red Nose also provides a lot of education to healthcare professionals, um, including, as you said, paramedics, those first line responders. Um, childcare educators as well. Um, that's really important in the childcare education space of educators that are caring for infants and young children that they're aware of these safe sleep practices. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the new parents. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's really important that the community is educated as well. So if you are a childcare worker, you can go to the website and access some education. Um, there's online education and there's also some training that one day we'll be back to face-to-face. -to -face. <laughs> yeah, I know with everything that we're going through at the moment. So all in all, um, I've read that Red Nose provides you know, education and training uh, to healthcare professionals, um, maternal and child health nurse centres. Um, they support new parents with information and health advice, as you just mentioned. Um, and there's a whole heap of different sort of um, uh, safe sleep training that they sort of do with, with medical professionals. Um, now, paramedics are often frontline with families who experience the death of a, a baby or a child. Um, and from what I, I see also that Red Nose conducts training for paramedics, um, and in particular in New South Wales, that is aimed at providing information and facilitating um, discussion with paramedics about appropriate support to families who ba whose baby um, has died. Um, and these sessions include New South Wales ambulance uh, trainees, graduate pa paramedics, um, paramedics in the UK, interstate, um, and all of these things, which is just incredible work. Um, I'd love to know from your perspective also, how does Red Nose support people who have been affected by the death of a baby or a child? Yeah, so Red Nose, as well as the education and the research support, mm -hmm. they also provide absolutely vital bereavement support to um, newly bereaved families and not even newly bereaved um, families, grandparents, siblings, healthcare professionals as well, if they need um, some support, if they've experienced um, a, a bereavement of a child in their workplace. Mm -hmm. So for example, a midwife can access some support from Red Nose if they needed to as well. Mm -hmm. So if, um, as well as the Red Nose website, the rednose.org.au, they also have Red Nose Grief and Loss. So that's another aspect to the organisation that provides support to parents and families who have experienced a sudden and unexpected death of an of a baby or infant, a child, yeah, or stillbirth or neonatal death or or a child as well. Mm -hmm. So Red Nose provides specialist and evidence based um, bereavement support um, from qualified counsellors free of charge to anyone affected by the death of a baby or a child um, from causes including SIDS, uh, uh, stillbirth, neonatal death and miscarriage amongst um, other causes. Um, and they also offer tailored grief and loss training packages, as you've mentioned, to workplaces that draw um, on their 40 years of experience of bereavement and, and counselling as well. Um, so 
getting back to Red Nose Day, as we mentioned at the very start of this chat, how does Red Nose Day um, on the 14th of August this year fit, it fit into all of this? And um, what is Red Nose doing differently this year due to, to COVID? So Red Nose Day, it is absolutely vital. Um, it's a vital day to recognise this organisation and to help raise valuable funds for this organisation mm -hmm. um, so that we're able to continue life-saving, safe sleeping education and support. Mm -hmm. um, we rely on the generosity of Australians who really do continue to connect with the value of what Red Nose do provide in helping save lives. Um, and as you mentioned before, Rachel, since 1988, since that very first Red Nose Day, mm -hmm. there's been an incredible 85% reduction in incredible. infant death. And that equates to more than 10,000 little lives that have been saved. And when you think of it like that, it's absolutely incredible. Um, but there is still so much more to do. In Australia, there are still nine babies per day dying suddenly and unexpectedly. And that's more than 3,000 a year. I know you mentioned that figure earlier as well. Um, and due to sudden, um, sudden infant death, other fatal sleeping accidents and stillbirth. And so that's why Red Nose Day is still so important because our work's not done until we get that number down from 3,000 to zero. Yes. So how can Australians get involved this year then? And how can parents make a ways, donation? Yeah, lots of ways that Australians can get involved. Yeah. Um, we can donate or you can all donate now at rednoseday.org.au forward slash donate. Yes. Or you can visit rednoseday.org.au for a range of ways that you can get involved. Mm -hmm. And because it is going to be a little bit different this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll <with> say that. <laughs> 2020 has raised its. <laughs> lots of unexpected things hasn't it with COVID so we've had to make way for that and um, created a range of digital options to help physical distancing Australians get involved from the comfort of their own homes so that includes Australia's first digital red noses and we've also got our online red e-tin rattle so for more information on that and to explain what that's all about you can jump on rednoseday.org.au forward slash get involved. Mm -hmm. And you can still buy actual Red Nose Day products. So you can still get the, the car Red Nose and, and people Red Noses and pens <laughs> and pins and, and little toys. But we recognise that, that some supporters are unable to, to participate in the way that they usually would. So you can purchase those online by the Red Nose website or you can actually go to Big W um, to purchase those items that are all individually wrapped to keep them help keep them COVID safe as well. well. Wonderful. Um, we've covered a lot of information today um, Paula. We'll make sure obviously all of those links are in the show notes um, for everyone to access um, but if you were to I guess summarise um, some of the most important key messages from um, our chat today what would they be? Thanks for the opportunity, Rachel. The key messages would be going back again to the safe sleep guidelines and those safe sleep messages are sleep baby on their back, keep head and face of baby uncovered, keep your baby in a smoke-free environment before and after birth, have a safe sleeping environment night and day, sleep your baby in your room and breastfeed wherever possible. Wonderful, critical and very important messages. Um, and once again, um, we'll have all of those links um, for, for parents to donate to this very important cause. Um, and this is something that shouldn't just be um, brought up in, in conversation just once a year. This is something that needs to be um, sort of lived, eaten, and breathed every day, as you said, with the safe sleeping uh, recommendations um, and by all means to continue supporting their incredible work. But thank you for your time today, Paula. Take care, stay safe and um, yeah, speak thank again you. soon. Rachel. Okay, Cheers. thank you. Okay, bye.